Hi everybody, welcome back to Majestic Collectibles, Flea Market Find, September 2022, Part 4. So finally, now that it, uh, you know September is halfway over, I have finally got to the last, uh, last batch of stuff I bought. Uh, some of them might look familiar, I bought a bunch of this very similar pieces from the same person over uh, 4th of July weekend, so you'll see a lot of similarities, you know, if it looks familiar. It's all different stuff, but same type of stuff. Hey, if you guys get a chance, click like, hit subscribe. You know what, come and see me, Merle Hay Mall Show, uh, 24th, 25th, so basically a week from, uh, well, be a week from tomorrow, no, today. Because this will air a day after I'm taping it, so it'll start a week from today. All right, so a week from today. It should be Saturday the 17th, so it'll be the 24th. I think my math's right. 23rd, 24th, something like that. It's on it's on YouTube or uh, Facebook. QuadCon Des Moines. Week after that, October 30th, or uh, September 30th, October 1st and 2nd, we've got the Capital City Card Convention, the National Trading Card Show, that's also in Des Moines at High V Hall, so you can, you can come see me there, and then right now, uh, I've got the rest of October off, so I can catch up on some of this stuff and get some of this stuff uh, sorted that you've been, uh, been seeing in these videos. So here we go, let's just start with some of the, um, some of the odd and unusual so a metal, I don't want to tip it up too much, a metal history of the presidents. And the newest one on here, I'm trying to see. Somebody was not a Clinton fan because they scra scratched it out. Let me show it to you. I'm, I'm guessing, which is interesting because I don't think this goes with the, uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely Republican because it looks like Clinton and Obama are both scratched out. But this board is a much, much older than that. Um, looks like it goes up through, assuming these are in order, and I think, think they're pretty close. Looks like Kennedy, looks like Kennedy might be the newest one on here. These aren't in order, you can see there's a few, few missing, so I'm trying to be careful, I don't have to pick them all up. Not worth it a lot, just tokens, not, uh, you know, no numismatic value, monetary value. Uh, this is something that used to be pretty good back in the day, the Star Trek uh, blueprints. You could order these off, and that's just what they are. It's blueprints of the USS Enterprise. And they have blueprints of, uh, oh, you can get the Excelsior and and uh, some of the other ships too, Birds of Prey, Klingon, or Romulan Warbirds, stuff like that. Again, Star Trek stuff, not uh, not too exciting, so not a, not a ton of value there. Uh, I've never had this book. Don't know what to make out of it. Illustrated Roger Zalanz Zalanzi. Um, I, I don't know. Looks like it's a fantasy artist. I am not familiar with them, to be flat out honest with you. Uh, Mick Foley's Christmas Chaos. Hardcover with a dust jacket. Uh, Mr. Scott's Guide to the Enterprise. Also hardcover dust jacketed. So that's nice. You know they're they're gonna have a little value, but um, I got I got to be honest, guys. This Star Trek stuff, I I have so much of it coming out of the woodwork now. The the first generation Star Trek uh, fans, another hardcover there, are uh, getting to that age where they're selling stuff off, and a lot of it's in really nice shape. It was all purchased by uh, by adult collectors. Um, some of the first prints of these were worth money at one time. I don't know if they still are or not. And I don't know if that's a first print. I haven't looked. Um, so Star Trek stuff is really, really, I would say, kind of getting close to the bottom and out. Because I don't have anybody new coming into that market. And there's a lot of material coming out right now, unfortunately. Uh, this is really neat. It's a Flash Gordon. It's a newspaper strip. Uh, it's it's the real deal. Um, 1930s or 40s. I'm trying to read the 1939 right there. Uh, it was mounted very nicely on a little bit of foam core. I didn't do that. That's the way it came. Uh, so a nice looking piece. Again, not worth much because you can get the reprints, high quality reprints, pretty uh, pretty readily. Here's another. Well, I don't even know what to do. I'll just dump those, I guess. Yeah, it sounds like it might be worth something, but uh, but it's not. So a lot of a lot of tokens. I don't even know what that one is here. 
to mark the occasion, British Commonwealth Games, Christchurch, New Zealand, 1974. Uh, tax token of some type. Uh, another token, October 72, historical landmark. Uh, treasury building, so souvenir kind of stuff. Um, these are older ones. They actually got some weight to them, but I don't know. There's usually not a lot of value there. And here's here's some more. And again, they look nice, you know, and they look like real coins, but there's there's no gold or silver, or precious metal or any real monetary value there. Got a much bunch more tokens. Um, this is kind of neat. It's a needle case. Uh, see them around a lot. It's very old. Probably teens, 20s, maybe 30s. I don't know. This is fun. It's original. Uh, racing sticker. Uh, unused, uh, obviously. A little green train car. I'm trying to see what else is in here. I don't know if there's anything... This might be the only other thing. Oh my goodness, these things stink. Oh, some type of Valentine. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Hanky, maybe? Yeah, that's about it. I'm not going to dig through the rest. There's not a, not a whole lot in that box. Um, so here's another, huh, another piece. Yeah. And uh, I've been told it's not complete. So I got it, and about 10 minutes later, he's like, oh yeah, I'm missing a couple of coins. I, they fell out when I took it out, and uh, he dropped them in like a, a waste basket or box or something. I didn't want to go look for them. So don't know how many it's missing. Um, 1969 Shell Oil. So a little bit of you know gas and oil collectible there. Uh, but if it's not complete, it's, it's not going to have much value. There's not much I'm going to be able to do with it, I'm afraid, that way. Uh, <clears throat> more DVDs. Whoops. This one. Oh, I'm going to move. Well, there it is. <clears throat> Laugh In. I do like that show. I'm not sure what's going on here. <clears throat> oh, I see. This came off the spindle. I'll fix, fix that later, I guess. I was... I was afraid that it was broken, but it's not. There we go. <clears throat> and this is the same one. If you remember the videos I got, there's a lot of vo war videos, combat. Uh, I think Rap Patrol was in there. Some sci-fi horror and kung fu stuff. Uh, this is from that uh, same group. Um, I think this is probably it. Uh, those are kind of tough to get. Some of the outer limit stuff. Oh, there's another Rap Patrol. Uh, ba Ba Black Sheep, watch that as a kid. Another Rap Patrol, another Outer Limits. New series, too. It's not the original one, unfortunately. So, Bravados. A couple Terry and the Pirates. You know, a lot of those were dollar things at Walmart. Uh, a little BBC, another Outer Limits. Uh, these are all, uh, so far, all, all open. Got some more Walking Dead. Walking Deceased, uh, very original idea, right? More Outer Limits. Let's see here. There's Volume 1. I think that's complete first season. Yep, I believe so. More, uh, more Laugh-In. This is interesting. Uh, I don't think I ever saw that. I did watch a lot of IPTV. Of course, growing up we had four channels, one of them being IPTV. So New Avengers, not the original 60s version. So, uh, you know, Patrick McNee, McNee is there. Joanna Lumley uh, was in it. So I don't know. I'll have to see if that thing's worth anything. Uh, another Best Of, which those usually don't have as much value as the full sets. Got some Mission Impossibles. Let's see, five, six, seven. I think the rest... The rest are probably buried in here somewhere. More Walking Dead, third and fourth season. Let's see here. Nowhere Man. Um, that one's probably got a little, little bit of value to it. That's a tougher one to get. Uh, there's a John Adams. That was a mini series. Whoops, I'm falling apart here. Rockford Files. Boy, I watched that. Tour of Duty. Well, that 
falling out. Nightmare at Bitter Creek. Uh, yep, never saw it. So let's see. Uh, Western Classics. See a lot of these. Some of them had 20, 50, a couple hundred. You could buy the sets really, really cheap at Walmart for a long time. Uh, so usually, usually that stuff doesn't have a whole lot of whole lot of collector value. Uh, McLeod, my Rockford files. I always, I did kind of like McLeod. Fish out of water, but kind of fun. Another Outer Limits. Oh, looks like another Laugh-In. Best of. Hello, hello. And hello, hello. Okay, I'm going to put these back and rearrange some stuff, and then we'll, uh, we'll get to the rest of it here. Okay, there we go. Got some more DVDs. This is well, to me anyways, the, the best one. I really like that syndicated TV series. Uh, I've only got the second season, so uh, I don't think I've, I've ever had the first one. I'll have to look. Uh, but I'm going to probably, probably keep that one. Flash Gordon, Hee Haw. There you go, Chad. Let me know if you want it. I know you're a big Hee Haw fan. More Baba Black Sheep. A couple of just freebies so they're you know kind of get what you pay for on on that one uh doc martin not at all familiar with that uh old stories real stories of the old west um documentary maybe splatter beach uh that actually might have just a little bit of collector value to it some of that schlocky sci-fi horror stuff actually has quite a following uh, let's see, Grey Knight, Catch-22, Wild West, Hatfields and McCoys, again, pretty recent stuff. Stuff you can probably find uh, somewhere uh, on your television. Uh, Screaming Dad, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, here's a more, more laugh-in. Uh, that one's usually pretty good. Set 3, Secret Agent. I don't know who decided to put that right on uh, Patrick's eyeball there. That was, that was not called for. So we'll get back into the more movies. The movies do not do as well as the TV shows for me. Not, not even close. Um, box sets of, of TV shows and then B-movies do okay you know like the sci-fi horror stuff uh but the movie stuff is so available on streaming that's that's a good one um not a lot of anime in any of this collection but i got a couple of vampire hunter d's uh i don't know which version they're not the oldest version because those are on vhs those i have uh, but they should be worth a little bit collector value wise Again, a lot of these multi-packs with multi-old uh, movies out of copyright. Um, you know, just something somebody didn't care about. That could be okay. Uh, I'm not sure what all uh, the movies are that are in here. If there's anything good. Cold Sweat, Lola, Man with... Nope, nothing great. So, never mind. That's probably not worth a whole lot. Sliders... Uh, great show. Don't get a lot of interest in it from collectors right now. Uh, New Bionic Woman, Friday Night Lights, Jeopardy. That at least is a looks like a season or partial season, so it should be complete. And I I've got a lot of them. So judging on the number of volumes, they're probably split. You know, like. One volume is half a season, next volume is the other half, something like that, I don't know. One, two, three, four. Oh no, it'd be more than that. There's only four episodes on a on a disc, and they had over 20 in a season. So yeah, they, there's a lot more of these. Twilight Zone. And I'm going to pause this again. I've got a couple more boxes to get to, and then we'll finish up. Okay, so here it is. Uh, I got two of these magazine boxes. I don't know. Should I go through every one? There's a lot of stuff. They're all, let me show you. They're the rest of the heavy metal magazines I had a few videos ago. Um, these are the newer ones, which are actually, actually kind of hard to find, to be honest with you. So got some beautiful covers. He had a subscription to the magazine, uh, which is about the only way I can get these newer ones because nobody, uh, 
you know, they were in Barnes and Noble and a few other bookstores, but nobody's really picking up. They were, they were fairly expensive. I'm not seeing there. They were six bucks. So, and I know at the end they were probably even higher than that. But just some beautiful covers on them. I don't know much about the interiors on these. I never really read them past about the mid '90s. So I might have to do a little little discovery on on that. You know, research research purposes right we'll call it we'll put it that way uh, so there we go I'm gonna have to get these bagged and boarded as you can see they are they are definitely have not been protected uh, well protected at all um, still in pretty nice shape got a little rubbing on them but you can see just some of the the airbrushed artwork is is really high quality in fact, I think this probably had a, a more solid cover art run than the than the older pieces. And you'll see the Julie Strain stuff. We saw um, what was it Heavy Metal 2000? Uh, she was kind of the face of heavy metal there for for a while and showed up in the magazines and was kind of their uh, I don't know spokesperson, spokesmodel is the is the right term. But I would I would say that'd have to be correct. We're up to 2007 already now. They weren't uh, they weren't published monthly. Oh, what's that? Oh, it must have been an ad that fell out from between the pages there. So let's go. We'll finish this up fairly quick. I don't know if anybody is still watching yet now or not. But we'll go through. I'm trying to look for some of the uh, the artists on these things, and I am not uh, I'm not seeing any pop out on the covers. Which it's not hard to find out. There's there's plenty of sourcing out there on the internet with with who drew what, and it's probably credited in, inside. It usually usually is. Whoops! Got to be careful. These things are very heavy, so if you don't hold them just right, uh, they'll flop over and the spine will break on them. I'm trying to uh, trying to avoid that. I know he said there were a few duplicates uh, in here. Boy, that looks like uh, looks like the dude that did the Borderlands uh, video game, doesn't it? Sure looked like it to me. So I'm gonna have I'm gonna have some begging and boarding to do on uh, on these magazines because there are quite a few of them. Of course, getting the bags and boards. Holy cow! I just ordered. Wholesale a, a couple cases of Silver Age uh, comic bags and boards, almost four hundred dollars, almost four hundred dollars. I couldn't believe it. I uh, I didn't I couldn't get to the thousand uh, dollar uh, shipping uh, or uh, sales amount for free shipping. Well, uh, because so much stuff is out of stock, and uh, if you order from BCW and it's uh, it's not in stock, they hold the the whole order until every single piece comes in and you know I don't know how long that's going to be for some of this stuff it's going to be a really long time so I just went ahead and ordered it but I had no idea I was going to get dinged I think almost half the price I think it was 150 60 some dollars was shipping I, I just about croaked so uh, I've ordered from them for over 20 years I've never really had uh, had you know, had that issue where something has just been that obnoxiously high priced. And one more box, guys, and then we're done. And then we're done. And then we'll see what I find in October. But other than the card show, I don't really have anything, uh, you know, just the first or second of October. So I don't know if we're going to have many finds on that or not, unless I get a collection in. So if somebody calls me on a collection of something, then I'll... Uh, then I'll have some more videos, but this could be it for for a little while anyway. Man, my arms my arms getting sore. I've got some doubles there. He told me he had some. These are the uh, that stuff there. That's the subscription sleeve. That's what they came in. And we're up to uh, what year? I know I've been going through them kind of fast. Uh, let's see, I don't even see a year on that one. 
Nope, not on there. It's number 272. It must be about 2010 or so. Let's see. Let's see what some of these other ones have. Maybe they'll have it on there. Oops, there we go. These are a lot thinner though. You can tell as they went on and got towards the end of the run. The magazines are not as thick. They're still heavy, but not as heavy as they used to be. Because um, I think it was just, you know, they knew they were getting there. The interest was drying up. I'm going to see if I can find... I'm just curious now. I don't see any dates on these. Let me see. It says June 29th is the next issue. It's not giving me a year though. Well, good grief. I know it's got to be in here somewhere. Oh, here we go. The page just stuck together a little bit on there. Six issues a year. Uh, let's see. Printed in the USA in Earthhampton, Mass. But the year is... Oh, I still can't see it. 2016. So we must be way at the end, if not not the end. We must be coming into the end of the original original run, I think. It's got to be getting super close here. I don't know if they're going to make 300. I don't. I don't know when the uh, or what the last issue was. It might say. Oh. Ah. The problem with some of these covers, they got a little bit of a UV coating on them and they press together and they can stick and they can can pull off the ink, the outer layer of the paper. So far these have been pretty good, but that is always a danger when uh, something like this is uh, stuck together for a long time to kind of fuse. Oh, that must be, okay. Kind of fuse together on them or brick if you're in the trading card parlance. Slipknot, I saw that in that last issue. <laughs> okay, here we go. Well, it looks like we're going to make 300. Yep. Uh, that's an anniversary issue. Well, that's interesting. So the numbering I don't know if that's the last number or not. Uh, 299. I don't know if that was the very last issue because this goes into uh, an anniversary issue from 77 to 2002. Uh, Marvel Illustrated. I haven't had one of these for a while. They usually weren't worth a ton, but we'll find out. Fangoria, Rue Morgue. Hard to find uh, Paranormal Magazine. Uh, Brooke Burke. Probably worth a little bit. Oh, I like this one. I've never seen this book. Hot Schlock Horror. Uh, yeah, I'll have to check that one out. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds fun, just the name of it. Uh, Star Wars Revisited, Star Quest, probably not worth a ton. Uh, Jerry Ryan. Let's see. The, the item purchase has been authentically hand-signed by the celebrity stated Jerry Ryan. Well, what the heck? Trying to see. Uh, I think the. Uh, I think the. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you can't see it. It's worn off. It, it, it was right, right in there, but it's all gone. So it must not have been protected right, and the, the ink, the ink picked up and came off. That's too bad. Uh, movie star news. I've never seen that. Mm. Galactic Wars Comics. That's another Warren magazine. Future World Warren again. Uh, basically Strange One. Must be newer. It's got the barcode. Well, no, 1982. So you must have picked this up at a collectible shop with that, that sticker on there. Uh, great, great series. I read that as a kid in the uh, backup store in the Giant Detective Comics in the 70s. Won all sorts of awards. If you've never read it, you really should. It, it was a really well done, really well done series. Uh, Gold Key Flash Gordon. Nothing to get too excited about. AXA. Um, again, nothing to get too excited about. Looks like I've got a, a few of those here. I'm just going to pull these out. 
uh, on them. This was a uh, newspaper strip ran, I believe, in the UK. I'm not sure. It was overseas. Uh, it was really popular uh, over there. And then they imported some of them in the, uh, the square bound stuff, kind of like trade paperbacks. Um, Grim Fairy Tale, Tales, Free Comic Book Day. I was going to look and see which uh, which year that was, actually, if it'll tell me here. Uh, well, it's been a while. Some of these do have some value from Free Comic Book Day, but uh, very few of them have a huge amount of value. Uh, here's an old uh, four-color comic, Peter Gunn, really, really rough shape, not much value there. Uh, I'll have to look. I think it's one of the few Charlton runs I have because it was Flash Gordon. Uh, this one's pretty nice, though, so I might be able to upgrade that. This one is not very nice. Uh, let's see. Nice cover. I like the magazine cover on it. Uh, again, another, uh, well, it's a movie classic. Uh, same publisher of uh, uh, Four Color Comics, Dell. Not, not a lot of value there. Uh, there's the EC reprint sampler. So I don't know. These have probably got a little value. Blazing Combat. It's it's a heavy book. And I don't know. I, I'm not familiar with this reprint version. So I don't know if that's the whole set, part of the set. I can't remember how many issues were in that one. Uh, but real nice, uh, high quality. It's not very old though. Fantagraphic books. Here's another one. Uh, Eerie, and this uh, reprints uh, issues 86 to 89, that's, that's hardcover, dust jacketed, fairly nice, little bit of wear on there. Um, unfortunately, that's the only volume I have of that. And then the Heavy Metal, 20 year anniversary, hardcover, it is limited edition. Um, I do believe they had some autographed or something even more limited than this. Um, this isn't it, but it's still a really nice book and not one I see a lot. So that's it, guys. Finally, finally, over an hour's worth of uh, flea market finds from the Nickinson County Fairground in northwest Iowa. Uh, check out our other videos, and thanks for watching.